Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is Earthmaster out here about 10.04 p.m. California time. October 18th, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the globe. Let's see what we got. A little 0.7 into Southern California. Looks like there's a handful of smaller quakes coming in there. Uh, across the San Jacinto Fault Zone, brushing up against the San Andreas Fault here over the last couple hours. Slight clustering going on here in this area. Nothing big. In fact, if you look at the last 24 hours of 2.5 and above here, well, pretty much removes all of the earthquakes here across the West Coast. So a lot of small microquake activity out there today, but really that's on any given day. Northern California pretty quiet as well. Let's check out the Cascadia Tremor activity here while we're at it. 28 epicenters here, a little bit up north and a little bit down south here. That is the Cascadia Subduction Zone Tremor. Not earthquake activity, but tremor that occurs down into the deeper areas of the subduction zone. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, across Washington up here, a handful of smaller quakes across Mount St. Helens, Rainier, and uh, looks like maybe a couple other quakes out there around the area. Nothing major going on there across Yellowstone. A little earthquake way up here in Montana outside of Helena. 2.5 near Lincoln, Montana. That was earlier this morning, though, about 10 o'clock or so. Oil fields out here, out there in the Texas area still getting hit. Eastern portion of the country is pretty quiet. So let's see what we got here for worldwide uptick. And the, uh, the best way to view it is on the Earthquake 3D globe here with the uh, red rings indicating older movement and the newer earthquakes here in the white, uh, whiter colored circles. And it looks like for now we got some type of movement going on here across the southern end of the globe, south west of uh, the South America area and also to the southeast here. Looks like the South Sandwich Trench seen a little earthquake activity. And uh, some more movement here off the Chile Rise area. A couple different fracture zones here. That should intensify the area of the subduction zone, which is the Peru Chile Trench here. Over the last seven days, a handful of smaller quakes here out in the Chile Rise area. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. 4.4. Uh, was previous to that. Looks like a 5.0, the latest earthquake here in that area along that fracture zone. 4.7 South Sandwich Trench from earlier this evening as well. We'll definitely uh, keep an eye there on the South America region. I mean, it's pretty much obvious here that we got some movement stirring up down here across the plate boundary. And as far as anything else goes, a newer movement. Uh, Japan seeing a little bit of activity up here into the southern end of the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. Australia, 3.5 out there, out to the southwest of Australia. And uh, New Zealand, pretty quiet right now. 4.7 up around the Tonga area, around the Tonga Trench. Pretty shallow earthquake, though. About 20 miles deep here for that 4.7. Things quieted down here in the last uh, 24 hours or so. Up across the Alaska area, uh, one earthquake here from, uh, it was earlier this afternoon, a little 4.3. Slight uptick here across the Aleutian Trench. Really nothing big going on. 2.5 map and above. Well, as you can see, there only leaves a handful of those uh, earthquakes. So mostly smaller microquake activity out there right now across that area. Uh, one little earthquake out on the uh, Blanco or the uh, Juan de Fuca Ridge here, northern end. This is a little fracture zone out here. Nothing big. Actually, that earthquake there was from last night following the other earthquake that struck out here really close here to the Cascadia subduction zone yesterday that, with that five-pointer. I don't recall the last time I've seen a five-pointer out there specifically in this area. Obviously, over here around the Blanco fracture zone, even the Gorda Ridge is here, but this is very close to the Cascadia subduction zone uh, interface area. Very close, so... Pretty important as to location where these earthquakes are occurring. Got to watch that. All right. Uh, anything else going on here across the world? Why a couple smaller earthquakes out there? But really, uh, you know, it's just a uh, typical Friday night out here. Nothing uh, spectacular going on, at least in my neck of the woods. Pretty quiet. Of course, on Friday night, I like to stay inside. I'm not, not one to get out and party. Uh, I think I'm past those days there, right? It's a little bit safer at home. 
A couple M flares stirring up here in the last few hours, as you can see there on the solar flare map, to uh, well, pretty much equal M flares. Those are off of a uh, far side sunspot there on the western limb, I believe. Let's see here. Yeah, Solar Ham mentioning that uh, M flare from departing sunspot. It almost seems like these sunspots here like to say goodbye in their own type of fashion with a, uh, a decent flare. That's going to be this area over here, uh, which is just about out of sight, out of mind. But again, it popped off two M flares um, just prior to leaving the, uh, the earth facing side here. And we are left uh, really with not a whole lot in terms of c complex sunspots out here. Got a newer area out here on the eastern limb that uh, kind of hard to see. It's not really looking super complex here, but uh, there is a little bit of uh, close proximity within the magnetic structure of that core that we'll have to watch. That's going to be 36 or 3863 looking uh, a little dynamic there. Now back behind that region, a little bit further out there on the far side of the sun, uh, we have 3842 and 3844. There's 3863, the new sunspot I was just showing you there on the eastern limb. These sunspots are uh, trailing behind it. We'll see a little visual of those here in the coming days. And it's a fairly large active region over there with two distinct sunspots, but the coverage uh, is telling me that these are, you know, pretty big. So we'll have to wait and see what happens as these come around the bend here to the eastern limb. We'll get a little bit better insight onto whether we're going to see some stronger flaring from that area once it comes out. A little bit of KP index peeking up there around the almost a G1 class storm area. Not for sure where this came from. I'm guessing maybe uh, from some of these coronal holes that have been facing us here recently. Adding on to uh, a little bit of the high speed solar wind stream. Um, yeah, in fact, that is it right here. Enhanced solar wind stream flowing from a coronal hole is stirring up geomagnetic activity at higher latitudes. Of course, that's off of these um, coronal holes that have been facing us here for a couple days. So these are basically um, areas of increased solar wind stream that uh, sometimes stirs up the auroras, like it is tonight. But uh, really nothing major expected here. So it looks like most of the activity going to be up around Alaska, Canada, maybe Greenland and Iceland as well. All right. Uh, what else we got out here, folks? Anything major going on out here in the world? Oh, well, there's a lot of stuff going on out here in the world as far as what this channel covers. Uh, anything going on in the buoy, buoy world? Go ahead and check this out here. Are we still operational? Operation here? Let's see. Did they change this up? Or are they doing some type of... Uh... Oh, there we go. Um, nothing major out there. I don't see anything in event mode. No magical buoys dropping 500 feet. <laughs> if they do, then that would be a big problem. But uh, a lot of times when that happens there, if we do get a buoy in event mode showing that weird stuff... It's normally an error technical issue. Storm Prediction Center, nothing major out here uh, for now. There is a little area out there across New Mexico, eastern New Mexico here, that could uh, stir up some tornado potential. I've seen a couple storm chasers heading down into that area, seeing if they can catch some rotating water vapor, which uh, is possible over the next couple days, mainly limited, again, down to the uh, desert southwest area, eastern New Mexico, maybe stretching into the panhandle there of Texas. And that's uh, primarily due to a, a low pressure system there pulling up some moisture there in the uh, desert southwest. So we put this into motion here. It's just going to spin around a little bit and create some thunderstorm activity. Uh, nothing major coming in here to the country. West coast, we got a little bit of storm systems coming in here. Some cooler and rainier patterns coming up here from my neck of the woods. I'm hoping it stretches down here to my neck of the woods. We'll see. Um, back behind that one, we've got another storm coming in. The Pacific Northwest is just getting hammered right now with, uh, some strong low pressure systems and atmospheric rivers. I wish that was pointed down south a little bit more, but we'll have to wait. Uh, either way, we got, you know, some pattern changes going on out here across the country. And it's getting quite active, for sure. 
Could that be snow coming down here towards the uh, northern plains? Potentially. We'll have to watch that. A lot of colder air coming down here as we enter into November. I mean, I can't believe it's almost November already. That's crazy to think about. It's been so hot out here in California. We had 100 degree days here even in October. So to think that we only have November, December, January, and February, and then it starts heating up again, uh, that's uh, goodness. That's going to make me appreciate these next four months because I do not like the heat out here. I'll enjoy the cooler weather. Uh, let's see what else we got. I think that's about it, folks. I'm just, I'm calling it at night. I'm pretty tired. I don't know. I've been feeling a little bit tired today. Missy Mimi's under the weather as well. So, uh, let's see if I can get her off of her cooking shows that she's watching there on the TV. I don't, I don't mind it. There's actually cooking shows are actually pretty cool. You know, definitely, uh, a lot of cooking channels out there on the YouTube platform. All right, uh, yeah, that's about it, folks. Hope everyone has a good night, Friday night. Stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back out here for the uh, Saturday morning update. Seismograph stations all calm and clear for now. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe.